Thank you. 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 Before we start with the keynote, we'd like to take a moment to talk about the tragedy that occurred yesterday in Orlando, Florida. We offer our deepest sympathies to everyone whose lives were touched by this violence. It was senseless, unconscionable act of terrorism and hate aimed at dividing and destroying. The Apple community is made up of people from all around the world, from all different backgrounds and all different points of view. We celebrate our diversity. We know that it makes us stronger and moves everyone forward. Please rise and join us in a moment of silence to honor the victims and the people who love them. Thank you. Thank you. Hello and welcome to WWDC 2016. It's great to be here at the legendary Bill Graham Auditorium in beautiful San Francisco. We have a really big and jam-packed morning plan for you and we couldn't be more excited. Let me give you some details on the conference this year. This is our 27th Worldwide Developers Conference. The developer community has never been more vibrant. We now have 13 million registered developers with 2 million added in the last year alone. The conference this year sold out over 5,000 attendees and millions more watching on the live stream. This is truly a worldwide conference we have people here from over 74 countries. We're excited that we're attracting so many new developers. Over 70% of the attendees at the conference this year are attending the conference for the very first time. And we're investing in the next generation of developers. We've awarded 350 scholarships this year. These guys are incredible. If you see them, make sure that you congratulate them. We have over 100 attendees at the conference this year that are under 18 years of age. The youngest, the youngest is only nine. Wow. I met her yesterday, and she is going to make one heck of a great developer. Now, this week is about helping you get the most out of our platforms. So we have over 100 engineering-led sessions and over 150 hands-on labs with over 1,000 Apple engineers on site here to help you through the week. The App Store started eight years ago with only 500 apps. Recently, we passed a major milestone. We now have two million apps on the App Store. Your two million apps have been downloaded 130 billion times. And as you know, the App Store is the best business opportunity for developers. 
We're about to pass $50 billion paid directly to developers. This is absolutely amazing. And of course, successful developers translates to us having the best apps on our platform for users. And this is what really matters. Now, we have a busy morning planned, but I'd like to take a moment to talk about why we do what we do at Apple. Our North Star has always been about improving people's lives by creating great products that change the world. And we've been doing this for a long time. But today, for the very first time, we are going to talk to you about four Apple platforms. Each of these platforms is category defining and world changing. The Macintosh, change personal computing. Today, it's the most innovative and loved personal computer on the planet. iPhone, changed phones forever. It's the best smartphone experience and the gold standard by which everything else is measured. The iPad magically transforms a glass canvas into anything that you want it to be. It's our clearest expression of the future of personal computing. Apple Watch, only one year old, it's already the ultimate device for a healthy life. And Apple TV, just announced last fall based on the idea that the future of TV is apps. It's already transforming the biggest screen in our homes. Now, we love creating great apps. We love creating great products that change the world. But we can't do it alone. Developers are a crucial part of that journey. You are about you are a part of everything that we do and everything that we will do going forward because it's together that we enrich people's lives. Now, we offer you four incredible platforms that power these world-changing product experiences. WatchOS, TVOS, OS X, iOS, we're going to move each of these platforms forward today, and we'd like to get started with WatchOS. And to do that, I'd like to invite Kevin Lynch up. Kevin? Thank you, Tim. So I am really excited to talk with you about WatchOS and show you some of what's ahead. Now, people who are using Apple Watch love it, particularly for quick glances at information and quick interactions. And our top focus is performance, and we've made optimizations across the entire system, including a serious acceleration in app launch time. Your app should actually respond instantly. And the information you look at should be updated before you go look, so it's ready the instant that you are, so you're not waiting. In watchOS 3, your favorite apps can respond instantly. So let's take a look. So we're gonna accomplish this by keeping your favorite apps in memory. We're gonna support background updates of data and refresh the information so it's ready the instant that you are. And then we support quickly launching these apps and interacting with them. This is gonna work for both the built-in apps and third-party apps. Let's take a look at an example. This is watchOS 2, and we're going to look at an app called One Football. We're gonna launch it from the complication on the bottom left, and we're gonna see how long it takes. So here we are launching the app. It takes a few seconds to launch. And then once it launches, it loads some data and it updates, there we go. So that is a pretty typical example in watchOS 2. Now we're gonna take a look at one football launching in watchOS 3. Are you guys ready? Okay, don't blink. That's it. <laughs> So that example is about seven times faster, but it feels like a million times faster. So now we've made it really easy to access your favorite apps. You can just press the side button below the crown to show what we call the dock. You can choose which apps go here, and you can quickly scroll through them.
And the apps are now both glanceable and interactive rather than separate concepts. And this is a dramatic improvement in how it feels to use the watch. So this increased performance allowed us to have access to our favorite apps quickly, and we want to be able to access them anywhere. So by using the side button, you can get to them easily. Now another key design goal we had was to make the watch feel more familiar. And so we've done, with the watch face now, we've added control center. You just swipe up from the bottom, just like on iOS, and very familiar. So this is a giant improvement at how it feels to use apps and to navigate the watch very simply and easily in watchOS 3. Now we've also made it more pow powerful to reply to messages. So now when you receive a message, you can see the ways to respond right there. We've removed a step. You don't have to actually press reply now. You can just pick the way you'd like to reply. And if you just scroll down, you'll see your smart replies right below the message. So you can just tap to reply in less than a second. Now sometimes you don't see exactly the response you like and you're not in a situation where you can use dictation, so wouldn't it be great if you could just write your message on the watch? Well, we're introducing a new way to do that with something that we call Scribble. With Scribble, you have a new way to respond just by writing what you like on the screen, and you can just quickly draw the letters for your message right there, like writing something like Starbucks. You can see the letters go right on top of each other. So that's a great new way to respond with just the response that you like on your watch. Now the watch face is great for quick looks, and it reflects your style, and it's also the character of the device. And we've had Mickey as a fun watch face that I, I like to use on weekends, but I know what my daughter's gonna really love, is Minnie is coming to the watch now. <laughs> and of course you can choose from a variety of colors for her outfit that match our bands perfectly. Now one of the most frequent things people do is look at their activity rings, and we're adding a new watch face specifically for that called activity. So it's a great, beautiful way to see your rings throughout the day. It comes not only in the analog version, but also a really nice chronograph version and a digital version. So a super good way for looking at your progress during the day. We've also added a really simple new face that we call numerals, which is very beautiful and the hours actually go around the dial during the day, and you can choose from a variety of fonts that match your style. So a really simple new watch face called Numerals. Now there's a lot of watch faces to choose from, and we're finding that people are actually switching between faces for different occasions. So we're going to make that super easy. You can now just swipe to switch to the face you'd like to use. And you can choose which faces you'd like and how they're configured so you can easily get to them. We've also added the ability to add more complications to faces, like weather here on the photos face. So now, really simple to navigate and use your watch faces as well. Let's see all this stuff running live. For a demo, please welcome Stacy Lysick. Stacey. Thank you, Kevin. Good morning. I could not be more excited to have the opportunity to show you Watch OS 3 today. I wake up to my favorite new face, just the girl I've been looking for. Now in watchOS 3, you have a place to keep all of your favorite apps. You choose which apps go in your dock and you choose the order. I can bring up my dock by pressing the side button and I can swipe through my apps one at a time or lay my finger down on these dots at the bottom of the screen and fly through my dock to get to any app. And the apps in my dock are live. So I can get a quick glance at information without even launching an app, like how close I am to closing my activity ranks. And the apps have been redesigned to put me within one tap of the thing I most want to do. Let's take a look at the timer app. One tap to launch it, and it's right there waiting for me. I can still set a custom timer if that's what I want to do, but the most common choices for a timer are right here on the screen. So with one tap, I can set a 10 minute timer and get right back to what I was doing. Even my favorite apps from the App Store can be in my dock, like Sweat with Kayla and Lyft, and they are lightning fast too. Let's take a look. With one tap, I can call a car. Yikes, three minutes. I have so much to show you, like new apps, reminders, and find my friends that have been designed specifically for this kind of quick interaction. Let's look at reminders. Now I can keep all my lists with me throughout the day and just check things off as I get them done. Here's my bucket list. You don't get to do this very often, but today's just one of those days.
Find My Friends takes advantage of background updates to ensure I always have the latest and greatest location for my friends and family. Now I never have to worry about whether my kids got to their activities on time. And we wanted to make changing your watch face as easy as swiping through apps on your dock. And while Mini's fabulous for a casual weekend, sometimes I want to wear something simple and elegant. Now with an edge-to-edge -edge swipe, I can get to my numerals face. And for those of you as obsessed with closing your rings as I am, we now have the activity face. Every time I raise my wrist, I get to see those big, beautiful rings reminding me to get up and get moving. And I can launch my workout right from the face. With a new quick start feature, I can bypass setting up a goal and just get started. I didn't really come dressed for a workout today, so I'm gonna swipe over, end that, and take us back to our watch face. Notifications are still right where you think they'd be, pulled down from the top of the screen. This is a message I saved from my friend Isabel. She's been teaching me a little Mandarin, and she wants me to reply about dinner tonight in Chinese. I can do that with a new Scribble feature. Scribble works in English and Chinese, and it knows what language my keyboard has been set to. So with my finger, I can write out a quick message. Ba Dian, or eight o'clock. Those are just a few of the features of watchOS 3, but of course there's more. Back to Kevin. That was awesome, Stacy. thank you. And it's so exciting to achieve this new level of performance on the watch. And we're finding that people who are wearing Apple Watch wear it all the time. And this opens up some new great ways that we can help. And one of these is actually getting help in critical situations, just by pushing a button that's actually on you. So you might be having a medical emergency, for example, or a safety situation. And we're going to be able to help with that with SOS on the watch, and we're gonna make it easy to call for help. To activate it, you just press and hold the side button. It's going to count down to let you know it's calling 911. And then you're gonna be on a live call with emergency services right on your watch. And this works either as a cellular call via your iPhone or directly from the watch if you're connected to Wi-Fi. And after you're done talking on the, on the phone with emergency services, the watch will automatically notify your emergency contacts. It'll send them a message. And the message also will include a map of your current location so they know where you are and they can coordinate with each other. Now after sending the message, your watch will actually now show your medical ID, which is also a new feature in, in watchOS. And it has things like, for example, your age and allergies and other information you'd like to put there. And SOS works not only uh, just in the US, but it works internationally. So for example, you might be traveling to someplace like Hong Kong, and you might not know what the emergency number is to call, but your Apple Watch does. So in this case, it calls 999 rather than 911. So this is an emergency feature that isn't one that you'll use often, but when you need it, it's gonna be there, and that's SOS. Now, one of the primary reasons people are wearing the watch today is for fitness and health, and we're enhancing the activity and workout apps, and we're adding a new app that we think you're gonna love. Take a look at this. Please welcome Jay Blonick. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. So we know that one of the most popular apps on the Apple Watch is the Activity app. And as Kevin and Stacy have mentioned, many people have told us that they actually become more active because they become addicted to closing the activity rings. And we love hearing that. But we also know that many people are motivated by other things. Some people are motivated by getting support from their family and friends. And if you're like me, you're motivated by good old fashioned competition. And we wanted to make that possible as well. So with watchOS, we're introducing activity sharing. And it couldn't be simpler. All you have to do is swipe to the right of your own activity rings, and there you will see your selected family and friends rings as well. Now you can sort by whatever metric is most important to you. So you can sort by steps, you can sort by workouts, you can even sort by exercise minutes. Here you'll see that I've sorted by the move ring, and I'm right where you'd expect me to be. I'm getting my butt kicked by Stacy but I'm annihilating Jeff, which makes me very happy. If you wanna see more details, all you do is tap on any one on your activity list, 
and you'll get an up-close look at their activity rings, but you can also see things like their daily step count and their workouts, even from third parties. But one of my favorite features is that you can communicate directly with the people that you're sharing activity with right in the activity app through messages. And when you do, you'll get smart replies that are geared around fitness and activity. Some are supportive, some are a little more competitive, but you can also do some fun things. For example, at the end of a workout, you could send your racing heart rate to one of your activity friends. Or, <laughs> your racing heart rate to one of your activity friends, or you can also send smack talk in your own voice right through audio messages. So we think this is gonna be a great way for you and your friends to stay motivated, to keep each other active, and we can't wait for you to try it. Now our team has been working hard to enable features that would allow more people to use the activity and workout apps. And one group we've been thinking a lot about is wheelchair users. Now many wheelchair users already have an Apple Watch. And they've written us and told us that they love it because it gives them instant access to messages and notifications right from the wrist. And this is particularly important because many wheelchair users have to tuck away their iPhones securely throughout the day. But to do a great activity and workout experience, we also recognize that we couldn't just use the same algorithms that we've used for non-wheelchair users because the biomechanics are completely different. For example, Many wheelchair users use a semicircular technique when they're pushing their wheelchair throughout the day. But as the terrain changes and the speed changes, they may switch to an arc technique or a single loop over technique. And this is what makes it complicated. These are only a few of the techniques that they may use. We knew that to do this right, we would not only have to do a lot of studies, but we would also need to enlist the help of experts. So we worked with the Challenge Athletes Foundation and the Lakeshore Foundation these are two of the world's largest organizations that are dedicated to promoting physical fitness for people in wheelchairs. With their help, we were able to conduct the studies, and we were able to do it on a wide variety of wheelchair users, including some veterans. And now, wheelchair users will have a setting. The time to stand notifications will be changed to time to roll. There will be two workouts in the workout app specifically dedicated to wheelchair users, and of course, the activity rings will be optimized for wheelchair pushes. We could not be more excited about this feature, and we're incredibly thankful to our partners for helping make it possible. Now, one of the things that we've learned about health and Apple Watch is that simple things like the activity rings can be very powerful at helping people change behavior. But we also know that there's a lot more to health than just fitness. And we've been thinking way beyond that. So with watchOS, we're launching a brand new app for health. It's called Breathe. And it's designed to guide you through simple, deep breathing sessions that can help you quiet your mind, relax your body, and just better deal with everyday stress. Now, yoga practitioners have been using deep breathing exercises for thousands of years as a way to positively impact the body and mind. But the medical community has also embraced deep breathing as a great way to improve daily health. Dr. Deepak Chopra, one of the early advocates of body-mind medicine, has said, taking a moment every day to do some deep breathing can reduce stress, calm the body-mind, as well as have long-term health benefits. Now, to get to the app, it's easy. You can launch it from your watch face, you can launch it from the dock, or like the stand reminders, you can actually set smart notifications to remind you and start building this as a habit every single day. When you open the app, you can easily change the amount of time you want to do your session from one to five minutes just by turning the digital crown. And when you're in the app experience, you'll be guided by beautiful visuals that make it really easy to follow along. And if you prefer to do this with your eyes closed, you can turn on the haptic feedback and gentle taps will guide you and you can do it without even looking. When the session's over, you'll get a summary and you'll also get your heart rate from the last few seconds of the session you just did. Now, if you already do deep breathing, we think this is gonna be a great way for you to fit it into your day more often. But for those of you that don't, we think this is gonna be a great way to get started and just one more simple way that it can help you live a better day. 
These are just a few of the exciting updates we have planned for fitness and health in watchOS. And I'm gonna give it back to Kevin. Thank you, Jay. That was really terrific. Um, I was actually using the Breed That backstage. It helped me a, a bit. Um, so watchOS 3 is a giant step forward for you as developers. When someone adds your app to the dock or to the watch face, it benefits from all the instant launch experience that we were showing, and you get background time to update your information before someone goes and looks. And that will enable really quick interactions with your app on the watch. Now, you can already build apps that are native to watch so you can run independent of iPhone, but we're also adding a number of new APIs that you can take advantage of when you're building apps for the watch. One of those is support now for Apple Pay within your app on the watch, so you can do purchases right there. Fitness apps will now be able to run in the background during workouts, enabling access to real-time heart rate information and motion data. And this is going to enable a whole new category of fitness apps on the watch. Also, we're enabling a much richer and expressive apps in watchOS, including support for Sprite Kit and Scene Kit, native event support from the Crown and for touch gestures. You can clap, it's good. Audio and video can be embedded right inside your app UI, and you can connect across devices with Game Center and CloudKit. So we're really excited about what new apps now can be created on Watch, and they're gonna be amazing. This is a great new opportunity for all of you. And the preview release for you is available today, so you can get going. And the free upgrade is coming to all Watch users this fall, and it's gonna feel like a whole new Watch. And that's just some of what's coming in watchOS. Thank you very much. So now to give you a look at tvOS, please welcome the one and only Eddie Q. So let's talk about tvOS and Apple TV. Last fall, we introduced the next generation of Apple TV, and for the first time, developers had a modern platform like iOS to develop for in the living room. And we said the future of TV is apps. And the response to Apple TV has been incredible. Here is what Chris Albrecht, the CEO of Stars, had to say. TVOS has allowed Stars to create an experience on Apple TV unlike anything we've done before, and our subscribers are loving it. Here's what the CEO of Boombit, a very popular iOS game developer, had to say. We easily extended our iOS game experience to the living room, something that is incredibly difficult to do on traditional consoles. Now, our last generation Apple TV had 80 video channels, and thanks to many of you, we now have over 1,300 video channels. <laughs> and we have over 6,000 native apps in just seven months and I've got some new apps to tell you about. First, Sling, which offers a great selection of live cable channels, is coming to Apple TV today. <laughs> Fox Sports Go, I'm a huge sports fan. Four sports games all at the same time on one screen coming this summer to Apple TV. <laughs> Molotov, a revolutionary new TV service in France with over 100 live channels, video on demand exclusively on iOS and Apple TV coming next month. <laughs> Great sports games like NBA 2K, adventure games like Minecraft Story Mode, and Sketch Party. You use your iPhone or iPad to draw and then you sit around the TV to guess. It's a lot of fun to do this with your group of friends. Now we've got great updates to tell you about for tvOS, and let me start with the Apple TV remote app. Now, Apple TV comes with the incredible Siri remote. It uses touch for navigation, Siri to tell it what you want to watch, and motion to play games. But a lot of our customers have told us that they would love an app on their iPhone that had all those same capabilities, and so we're making a new version of the remote app. This is what it looks like. It's got a beautiful now playing screen with playback controls, but most importantly, all the features of the Siri remote. You have touch for navigation, Siri to give it commands, and it uses the accelerometer and gyroscope to play games. Yeah. 
And of course, you can enter text with the keyboard. Next, let's talk about Siri. Siri changed the way we interact with our television because now we just tell it what we want to watch. And we're making it even better because now you can search movies by topics. Now, my daughter is actually going to high school this fall. And I remember back when I went to high school, it's been a while, there's some great movies that I'd love to watch with her. And now Siri makes this really easy because I can just say, find high school comedies from the 80s. And sorry, we'll do that one again. Find high school comedies from the 80s. And there are some of my favorites. I actually have watched them all. Let's take a look at Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And with just one tap, we can start watching. Now, Siri actually searches over 650,000 movies and TV shows now. But what about YouTube? Well, that's easy, too, because now you just ask Siri. Search YouTube for Steph Curry's three-pointers. <laughs> Siri launches YouTube and shows you the results. But a big part of your TV experience is live channels. And we've got some great channels on Apple TV, like ABC, CBS, FX, and a lot more that give you live channels. But to start watching, you've got to find the app, you've got to launch it, and then you've got to find the channel. Well, we've got a great new feature called Live TuneIn. And all you have to do, watch ESPN2. Something here. Taken straight to the action. Go! And this is already working with a lot of great channels, and we're making live tune-in available on both your iPad and Apple TV as well. And one problem with this is, let's be honest, when you go in and you launch a video channel app for the first time, you get something like this. And you've got to go find a browser, authenticate with a code, and then uh, authenticate to your TV provider. Well, we're going to make this change a little bit. But it's worse, because you've got to do it for each and every app. And now, we're going to make it all go away with a feature we call Single Sign-On. <laughs> you sign in once on your Apple TV, and you get access to all of your network apps. And we make it even better. We, a page on the App Store will show you all of the apps that you now have access to. And of course, we're bringing this to iOS as well. Now, in addition to single sign-on, we've got some other great updates. Now, Apple TV looks beautiful, but there are times where you wish it was darker because you're in a home theater or a dark room, and now that's really easy because you can just switch to dark mode. <laughs> now, we want to make it even easier for customers to get your apps. And so just like when you download an app on your iPhone, it automatically downloads to your Apple TV, it now automatically downloads to your, your Apple TV. And uh, this is really great, and I'm going to show you. So I get the Major League Baseball app on my iPhone. You do nothing, and there it is right on your Apple TV. Now, there's never been a better time for all of you to build apps for the big screen, and we've got some great new features for you as well. First of all, Replay Kit, where you can live broadcast your gameplay or save the video to share it later. We've got Photo Kit, gives you access to your complete iCloud photo library, all the videos, all the photos. And of course, Home Kit, where you can create apps to control all the devices in your, on, at home. And that's just some of the many features. We've got things like support for four game controllers, multiplayer game sessions, and a lot more. And that is a quick update to the tvOS, a new Apple TV remote app, great Siri enhancements with topic search, YouTube, and live tune-in, obviously single sign-on, so now you get access to all your network apps and great tools for developers. And all of you will get a developer preview today. I can't wait to see all of the apps that you start building, and our customers will get it this fall, and that is tvOS. <laughs> now to talk to you about OS X, here is Craig Federici. Good morning. Hey, good morning. It's great to be back at WWDC to talk to you about OS X. And of course, 
no presentation at WWDC about OS X would be complete without some kind of naming controversy. <laughs> now, I'm not talking about some allegedly baked members of our marketing team going on some kind of vision quest around California looking for a special name. I'm actually talking about the name OS X itself. You know, OS X has been with us as a name for over 15 years, and it served us so well. But as we look at it alongside its younger <laughs> brethren, <laughs> something sticks out. We realize that there's a name that would be so much clearer and so much more elegant. And so, we're making it so. The name of the world's most advanced desktop operating system is now Mac OS. Now, of course, each version of Mac OS does have a special name after a place that's especially important to us here in California. And this year's Mac OS is no different. But the choice this time was obvious. Our latest, newest OS X is Mac OS Sierra. Now, Sierra is a fantastic new release with a big focus on continuity, the iCloud, and the fundamentals of the Mac experience. I want to start with continuity, because continuity is like magic. Your devices are able to sense themselves around you and use secure peer-to-peer -peer wireless protocols to enable you to move from one task to another across your devices just seamlessly. Well, we wanted to take on this year one task that we all do many times a day every time we start using our Macs, and that feature is called Auto Unlock. So today, when you first approach your Mac to use it, the experience is something like this. You open it up, and you're confronted with a password field, and then you type, and then maybe mistype, and then retype your password, and then you're in and using your Mac. But you know, for many of us, we already have a device securely authenticated to our wrists that already knows who we are and could tell our Mac. And so then, when we opened our Mac, it could be a little bit more like this. And we're in. It's that simple. And we made this really secure using time of flight networking to make sure it's you who's that close to the machine who's unlocking it. So it's really great. Now, the next continuity feature in Mac OS Sierra is universal clipboard. Now, <laughs> wow, gasp. So, but I know co copy and paste is so fundamental to the way that we use our Macs for so many years now. But what if when you were on even your iPhone and you found some text and you just went to copy it, that when you then went to your Mac, well, you could just paste it right in. And now you can with images, video, everything, it's completely automatic. Now I'd like to move on to iCloud, and specifically iCloud Drive. Now today with iCloud Drive, you can put documents into your iCloud Drive that you explicitly want to make available to you across your other systems, as well as your iOS devices. And customers have done quite a bit of this. There are actually 10 billion customer documents in iCloud Drive today but we want to take this a step further. We want all of your documents and your desktop accessible to you everywhere, so that when you're on one Mac, maybe you're putting things in your normal documents folder, well, of course, those should be available to you on your other Macs. But you know, for 30 years now, we've all learned to do the work, the things that we're working on right now, well, where do we put those? So often it's on our desktop. So let's make our desktop available on our other Macs as well, and have those files be available to us on the go on our iPhones. Now you can. Next up, optimized storage. You know, we love using our Macs, and we fill them with so much stuff, but you can end up with a situation like this. And, uh, you know, what do you do about it? Well, it turns out we're going to give you a solution, and it works in two ways. First, it helps you make room for the files that your new files by keeping your older ones up in the cloud. 
So whether it's your full resolution photos when your others are in iCloud Drive or movies that you've already watched in iTunes or even those old mail attachments, we can clear off that space locally and make those things available to you on demand. But we also wanna make it easy for you to get rid of files you'll never use again automatically. Things like your Safari web cache and maybe the trash that you keep forgetting to empty and redundant data that's stored by mail. Well, we can get rid of all of that as well. And we provide a really simple user interface to help you do it. Now, as a test, we took a system that was nearly full. It had about, let's say, 20 gigs free, and we put it through the paces. Now, it had a lot of photos and a lot of documents. It had movies that were already watched, mail with lots of attachment, apps, system files, and so forth. And we turned on all the switches for optimized storage, and we went from 20 gigs free to 150 gigs free. So we think this is gonna make a big difference for all of you. Next, Apple Pay. So we all love using Apple Pay in stores to pay with our phones and our uh, Apple Watch at the cash register and to shop inside apps on our iOS devices. So of course we wanted to bring this experience to the Mac. And we thought long and hard about exactly the right way to do it and I think we've nailed it. I think we might have an accessory business with some carrying straps. It could be very helpful. No, this is not how people are going to shop on their Macs, right? We shop online, on the web, in Safari. And so what are we doing? We're bringing Apple Pay to the web. So now, when you're shopping online, you'll have a Pay with Apple Pay button available to you. When you click it, a sheet comes down and actually prompts you to securely authenticate your purchase using continuity right on your iPhone with Touch ID. And of course, this works with your Apple Watch as well, so you can authenticate with just a tap on your wrist. And already, many, many merchants are signed up to bring their web storefronts to support Apple Pay on the web. And Apple Pay is expanding hugely geographically. It's now available in the United States, the UK, Canada, Australia, China, and Singapore. And in the next few months, it's coming to Switzerland, France, and Hong Kong. Now, next, I want to move to part of the Mac experience, and that's tabs. You know, many of us love using tabs to take a mess of windows that we have in Safari and get them neatly organized and tab set. Well, now we want to bring that to all of your multi-windowed apps. So maybe you have multiple windows open in maps. Well, you could organize those in tabs. But because it's built into the system, you could do that for third-party apps as well. In fact, we've implemented it in a way that the apps you already have installed can support this out of the box without any modification. So tabs everywhere. <laughs> so next, picture in picture. We love watching video on the web, but sometimes we like to keep track of a video while we're doing other work. Well, now you can. You can push the picture-in-picture -picture button. Your video goes into a nice little pip. You can move it around the screen, and it works great in full screen as well. So these are seven great features in macOS Sierra. But there is one more. And this year, I'd like to take the unusual step of letting this feature introduce itself. Hi, it's me. It sure is great to be on the Mac. How about a demo? That's right. Siri is coming to the Mac. And it looks like Siri would like to give a demo, so let's get to it. So we have Mac OS Sierra right here. And the first thing you'll notice is right here on the dock, we have access to Siri. So I can ask Siri a question. Let's say, how do you like being on a Mac? Pretty awesome. Lots of space, aluminum unibody walls, and no complaint about the lack of windows. So, <laughs> so it's the same Siri that we know and love, but now on the Mac, it can do so much more. Things like, sophisticated queries for files, like 
show the files I worked on last week about the offsite. Have I ever told you your filing is so styling? So we have my search results, but what's really incredible is I can refine that sophisticated query with a follow-on, like just the ones Ken sent me that I tagged with draft. For your filing pleasure. So you see I have just the files I'm looking for right there. But what's great is this is a useful result that I may want to use throughout the day as I work. So I can actually click on this plus button and pin it right here into my notification center. And this, yeah, it's really great. And this works for lots of your Siri results. So I'm gonna actually open this team offsite presentation, uh, just working on a little, little project here. I'll take this one full screen. We see we're planning an offsite, and there are a bunch of activities. But while I'm working in full screen, Siri's there for me and helps me multitask. So I can do things like play my power ballads playlist. Oh, yeah. So Siri to the rescue with some awesome tunes. I can let this play all day, but I think we'll get on with the demo. So I can actually use my Siri results here to help me complete this presentation. So I have an image result here for slacklining. Let me just click in my Siri result, drag it right into my presentation. And I can also have Siri search the web for me. So let's do uh, search the web for pictures of falconry. Here are some images of falconry I found on the web. Okay, that looks like some good fun. So I can actually take the results right out of Siri and drag them into my document. It's pretty epic. But you know, I'd, I'd like to uh, actually replace this map with one that I've been working on here on my iPad. So my iPad's so great because I can actually use my Apple Pencil to do some drawings. So let's see, I'm gonna take my Apple Pencil here and I'm gonna draw a path, maybe we'll, we'll take a hike like this, maybe out over here, just like that. Okay, that looks like just the uh, drawing I want, but of course, I'd like to now get it on my Mac. So how do I do that? Well, why don't I just copy it? But I'm not just copying it to my iPad, because when I return to my Mac, I can paste it just like I would anything else, actually wirelessly transfers it automatically into my document. <laughs> So now that I look at this trip, I realize that it's a horrible idea. So I can actually use Siri to message uh, my friend, tell Ken, maybe we should just see a movie. Here's your message, ready to send it. You bet. It's sent. So I can use Siri, of course, to do messaging at any time, and it can also help me find that movie. What new movies are playing this Friday? I found eight movies playing on Friday. All right, so Siri's given me some results, and uh, Finding Dory looks pretty good, so let's open that up. Now I can go play the trailer. But I can also drop right here into Picture in Picture. And you see in Picture in Picture, I can actually resize if I want. I can reposition the PIP window to any corner. And, of course, it works great in full screen, right on top of my other content. So this movie looks pretty good, so I think I'll go back into the browser, and let's actually buy some tickets. So I see there's a showing here at 7.15, I'll select that. Select the amount, let's go with uh, 10 of us, and here you see a buy with Apple Pay button. So watch what happens, when I click buy with Apple Pay, I'm prompted to confirm here on my iPhone, I just use Touch ID with my fingerprint, and I can securely authenticate my transaction just like that. And that's a quick look at macOS Sierra. So Sierra, some great features for continuity, the cloud, Apple Pay, user experience, and of course Siri. And there's much more that you'll be hearing about later today. Now, Sierra is available to you developers in developer preview form today, and we're doing a public beta in July. You can sign up now at beta.apple.com and it'll be available to everyone else in the fall across all of these systems. That is your update on Mac OS. <laughs> Next, let's turn to iOS. So iOS, we're hitting a big milestone because now I'm pleased to introduce iOS 10.
Now, iOS 10 is a huge release for developers, and it is the biggest iOS release ever for our users. Now, there are 10 big features I wanna talk about today, and let's start off with number one, that's user experience. Now, in iOS 10, we've redesigned the experience of the lock screen with rich notifications that give you quick interaction with apps through the expanded use of 3D Touch. But rather than just talk about it, how about I just show it to you right now? Let's do a demo. Now, one thing a lot of us have noticed now that we have our iPhone 6s with the incredibly fast Touch ID sensor is that we can just blow past our notifications on our lock screen. We never even get to see them. And so in iOS 10, we have a great solution. It's called Raise to Wake, and it lets you see what's on your lock screen without ever touching a button. Let me show it to you now. I just raise my wrist, and my phone wakes up just like that. Now, the first thing you'll notice is these beautiful notifications are no longer causing us to darken the, uh, your wallpaper, so you get to look at that, but what's more important is they're really interactive through 3D Touch. So for instance, with this calendar notification, I can just 3D Touch on it, and I can jump right in and get all this rich detail about this uh, invitation. I can see my calendar, and I can accept it right here. Now, this is especially great with messages. So let's 3D Touch into that one. And here you see, I see the message that was sent to me. I can respond right here, the keyboard. But what's great is I can stay in the conversation right here on the lock screen and even get rich responses like images right in line. And this works really well with third-party apps as well. So for instance, if I get a notification from Uber, I can just press in and I get this completely interactive and animated live status update on my car as it comes in. It's really great. Now, of course, as always, you can get your notifications right here from the top of the screen. But now, with 3D Touch, if you want to clear them, you can just press in and clear them all with a tap. It's really great. Now, Control Center is available from the bottom of the screen as well. We can just swipe up from the bottom. You see, it's beautifully redesigned, gives me great access to all my controls, but if I swipe over, you see we have a special area for our music with nice big controls and beautiful album art right there. Now, we've made it easier than ever to get at your camera from the lock screen. So I can just slide over from the right and there's my camera. And it's easy to take a picture of my demo notes right there. That's good. And we've made it easier than ever to get at your widgets. Just slide over the other way. You can see I have my weather, I have my calendar, I get my news top stories. And you notice these widgets have the ability for me to get more information. So I can do show more and see the, uh, the rest of my day, uh, you'd like to think. And I can even get more information right here from apps on my home screen. So for instance, it looks like I have a decent number of unread email messages. And now, if I 3D touch there, I can see who it is I've been ignoring this whole time, my VIPs. <laughs> now, if I swipe over here, I can also get great information on activity without even launching the app. I just 3D touch in and get a look at my rings. And this can work really well with third-party apps as well. So I'm going to jump into ESPN, can see information about my latest team. And if I want that widget available to me at all times on my Today View, I can just add that widget like that. And I go over to my Today View, and there it is. And I can get that show more information. And you see I get a graphical update on the highlights from the last game. And if I tap in, live action. Curry to Iguodala. Shot clock at seven. Curry fakes, puts up a three. Bang! Bang. Seth and Curry from downtown. It's a 10-point game. Oh, yeah. So that is a quick look at the new lock screen and home screen experience in iOS 10. You have a beautiful new control center interactive notifications, and great ways to use your widgets. It's great on the iPhone and the iPad as well. Next, number two, Siri. Huge part of the user experience in iOS. Now, Siri services over two billion requests a week from customers, and there's so many things that you can ask Siri. 
But now in iOS 10, Siri's going to be able to do so much more because we're opening up Siri to developers. Now you'll be able to ask Siri things like, send a WeChat to Nancy saying I'll be five minutes late, and Siri can summon up the WeChat UI right inside of the Siri environment. Now, of course, Siri, because it understands the domains of things like messaging, it allows you to say things in so many different ways. I could have said, WeChat Nancy, that I'll be five minutes late, or I need to send a message to Nancy via WeChat saying I'll be five minutes late. And I could do that in all sorts of different languages. But because now in iOS 10, we have an intense API, it allows Siri to take on that part of the work and lets the extension do what it does best, like messaging. And so now we support messaging with apps like Slack and WhatsApp and of course WeChat. You can do things like ride booking in Siri with services like Uber, Lyft, and Didi in China. Photo search for th in apps like IM, Shutterfly, and Pinterest. And you can start, st uh, pause, and stop your workouts in apps like Map My Run, Runtastic, and Runkeeper. And even do payments to send money to friends with things like Number 26, Square Cash, and Alipay in China. And do VoIP calling through apps like Cisco Spark, Vonage, and Skype. And it works great in the car as well, because with CarPlay, you can now safely send your uh, messages as well as make VoIP calls all inside the CarPlay environment with your favorite apps. And that's a quick update on Siri. Yeah. Number three, quick type. And the big news this year is we're bringing Siri intelligence to the keyboard. So today, QuickType is able to use uh, context to help predict what words you might type next. Well now, we're using deep learning and a technique specifically called LSTMs to enable much more intelligence uh, in longer context so we can tell the difference between the Orioles are playing in the playoffs and the children are playing in the park automatically. And Siri can help you do responses more intelligently than ever. So you might get asked, where are you? Well, Siri can suggest right there on the suggestion bar that you supply your current location. Tap it, and you can get your location with a map right into your transcript. And people might ask you about contact information for a friend. Well, Siri can automatically offer, offer up the most relevant contacts. Now, right locally on your device, Siri has information about what you've been doing, and so it can extract information from a message that maybe says, oh, you're talking about dim sum at 11 a.m. on Sunday. Well, when you go to automatically create a calendar event, Siri can pre-fill it for you with things like, oh, that must be brunch. Fill out the location. Pick the time. It's really smart. And Siri does so much more. It can check your calendar availability for you automatically. Help you paste a recent address automatically. Fill it in based on addresses you were browsing in other uh, apps. It can help you look up terms it recognizes, things like movies and restaurants. With one tap, you can get more information. And Siri now, uh, the QuickType keyboard supports multilingual typing. So if you like typing alternating maybe between English and Spanish or Italian, you don't have to switch keyboards. QuickType can follow you automatically. So that's QuickType. Next, number four is photos. Now, we love capturing so much of our lives on our cameras, uh, with, on our iPhones. They're so great. And with iCloud Photo Library, we have those photos with us across all of our devices. Well, we wanted to give you easier ways, of course, to find and experience the photos that you've taken. And one of those is with places. So now, we let you see all of your photos on a map. It's a great way to relive a trip, for instance. But the big news in photos this year is advanced computer vision. We're applying advanced deep learning techniques to bring face, facial recognition to the iPhone. And it's all done locally on device, taking advantage of the power of the advanced silicon in all of our iOS devices. You can get all of your most important people automatically built into pre people albums for you automatically and all done with your privacy protected. 
Now, we're applying the same kind of technology with deep learning to object and scene recognition as well. In fact, we do 11 billion computations per photo to be able to detect things like there's a horse, there's water, there's a mountain, and with this, you can do really powerful searching on your device. But you know, sometimes the magic and experience in your photos isn't just about finding a photo that you know you're looking for, it's about being reminded serendipitously of a memory that would be so special. And so now we're using advanced artificial intelligence to analyze across your entire photo library, all done locally on device, to cluster together photos and relate them based on location, the people involved, the scenes, and out of this be able to surface memories that would be most relevant to you at any given moment. We can bring forward things like trips. We can spot trips that might be important to you. We can figure out that you might want to see photos of a highlight reel of the last weekend or the last year and offer those to you at just the right time. We can bring forward uh, memories of people that are special to you or groups of people and topics, special photos you took, for instance, when you're on the water, or at the beach, at the mountains. These can make wonderful memories to survey over time. But most important, we pull these together into an intuitive user interface that makes these so engaging. And I'd like to show you that experience now. So let's take a look at photos. So we see there's a photo album here of a family, but what you'll notice at the bottom is this new tab called Memories. Let's take a look. So we can see here there are a number of memories that have been offered up into this memories feed. And at the top, there's a vacation that the system has spotted where the family took a trip to Tahoe City. Let's dive in and take a look at a memory. Now you see there's actually a movie up at the top. We'll talk more about that later. And down below, there's this beautiful layout of highlights of the photos. Now I can tap show all and actually see a grid of every photo that was taken, but you can see how the summary intelligently draws out the most special photos into these highlights that are really great to browse. Now, if we go further down, we see that it's actually pulled out the set of people that are in the photo, the family, grandma and grandpa and the uncle, and a map of the location where all of those photos were taken. And down here at the bottom, we have related other memories I might want to see related to this one. And it's really smart. So you see that the uh, Santa Cruz and Fourth of July uh, memories, well, grandma and grandpa were both on the trip in Tahoe City and in these, so those are offered up as related. And this Tahoe City trip was an outdoor vacation, so it offered up another one, like Alaska. And you can see there's another time the family was also at Tahoe City, but this time in the winter. Now I'm going to jump in to that related memory. And you see, once again, we have photos and videos at the bottom, but I want to highlight the movie up here at the top. You know, we all take so many pictures and movies, and we never go back to actually assemble them into something we'd want to watch. But now our iPhone can do that for us automatically. Let's see what the iPhone has created for this memory. Isn't that great? No. The, the advanced computer vision of the Photos app is now doing analysis of just the right parts of the video to include, the right photos, and it's editing them together with the right mood and with the right music. Now, when you have a, a memory like this, you often want to share it. And sometimes you might want to make it a little shorter, say, for sharing. So I can just use this slider at the bottom and say I'd like it to be shorter. And maybe I want to change the mood a little bit. You notice there's a mood slider just up above there, and that was a pretty great snowball fight. So I'll pick Epic. And based on these changes, it's going to completely re-edit the movie to new music. Let's take a look. That's pretty epic. And that's a quick look 
at memories in iOS 10. It's really fantastic on your iPhone, and it's great on your iPad as well. And Mac gets many of these new features as well. The great new face recognition engine, scene and object recognition search, and the ability to browse photo and video galleries of your memories. And the Apple TV is just such a great way to experience those memory movies on the biggest screen in your house. So that is photos. Now next, I wanna talk about the big news in all of our biggest services here at Apple. And to do that, I'm gonna bring up for number five, six, and seven, Eddie Q, back to the stage. Eddie. Thank you, Craig. I love the new photos. Can't wait to do it. So let's, talk, let's get started with Maps. Now last year, we introduced Nearby, a great way to find places and transit with an incredible amount of detail, including all the entrances and exits from every station. But for iOS 10, we've got an all new design for Maps. It starts with making it easy to access controls and details on locations. And we're making Maps do more for you in advance. It's more proactive. So you slide up from the bottom and you can see suggestions. Maps knows that usually at this time, I usually go to work. Or it can look at a calendar event and find a location. It also gives you convenient ways to filter down on the places you might want to go. For example, let's take a look at restaurants nearby. But we're in San Francisco, I feel like seafood, so I can slide across the bottom, and now I can see all the seafood restaurants right in San Francisco. Now we're applying all of these new designs to navigation as well. So you get more information, it makes it easier to follow and control, and we even include traffic on route. Now when you're driving, it'll automatically zoom in, and as you get to a long straightaway, it'll automatically zoom back out. And you can even pan and zoom way further ahead to see what the traffic conditions are. Now we give you quick controls to let you see route details, so now you can even look and see on your route where food or gas stations are, and Maps will tell you how much longer it'll take if you go to any one of those. And of course, we're making this available on CarPlay. And if there's a lot of traffic ahead, Maps will proactively give you alternate routes and tell you how much time it'll save. And we're making it safer to follow directions while keeping your eyes on the road, because now you can get turn by turn right in the instrument cluster of your car. Now we think you're gonna love these updates, but there's more because we are opening maps up to developers. Now with map extensions, you can enable all new capabilities in maps. For example, you can make a reservation using a popular app like OpenTable. You pick the number of people, the time, right inside of maps. And because these are extensions, they're open to dev all developers around the world, like Ding, Ding An Ping in China, and Zomato around many countries around the world. And when you're ready to leave, you tap on directions, and now you're offered the new option to book a ride. And with app extensions like Uber, you can pick any kind of car, pay for it with Apple Pay, and see the status. So again, I can find a restaurant, I can book a reservation, I can request a car, I can pay for it, and I can see when it's going to arrive all without leaving maps. <laughs> and these extensions are open to all developers. Here's the Chinese ride service app, Didi, and that is maps. Number six, music. So Apple Music lets you play from millions of songs, thousands of playlists curated by our team of experts, and it's been an incredible year. We now have over 15 million paid subscribers. This is the fastest music service ever in its first year. And we've learned a lot along the way, and so today we've got an all new Apple Music redesigned from the ground up. We want to give greater clarity and simplicity to every aspect of Apple Music, and here is what it looks like. It has a beautiful, 
It has a beautiful new design language that allows the music to be the hero. Nothing shows this more than now playing. Now the new structure makes it clear where you are and also emphasizes the features that you use every day. And all of these changes come together to create a new music app that's both more intuitive and familiar. And now, to give you a demo of it, I'd like to invite up Bozma St. John. Thank you, Eddie. All right. Ladies and gents, I'm so excited to show you the all new Apple Music. Now, lots of people listen to their music from their library. So now, when we open up the music app, you'll see that the first tab is the library. People also have huge music libraries. So now it's easier to navigate with simple sections like playlists, artists, albums, songs, and now a new section called downloaded music. When I tap onto downloaded music, you'll see that this is where all of the music which is on my iPhone sits. Now, I call myself a super execu mommy because I'm flying all over the place, and now it really makes it easy for me to see all the music that's on my iPhone. There's also the recently added section, and this includes the albums, songs, and playlists that I've recently added to my library. You'll see that there's tons of awesome music here, like this classic, the Sugar Hill Gang, and it kind of feels appropriate to get this party started with a little bit of Rapper's Delight, right? Come on, let's listen to something. Come on, y'all. Now you recognize this beat, right? Come on, we're gonna make this whole auditorium rock. Come on, on one, two, three, let's go. One, two, three, rock. Yes, there you go. All right, now we're gonna multitask, okay? Look at the bottom of the screen. You see the artwork, the title, and control so that you can skip. And when we open it, you'll see that there is beautiful detail on the artwork, the controls, and now their lyrics. So come on, we're gonna rap. Let's go. Come on, y'all. Okay, you know what, no. We're gonna pause this, okay? Because some of you guys are not rapping to the beat, okay? <laughs> but you'll have plenty of time on your own to study the lyrics, okay? All right, let's go to the next tab, for you. I love for you. It's my favorite part of Apple Music. And you know why? Because it's all about me. Yes, that's correct. So now you'll see that at the top of For You, there's a discovery mix. Now this contains the songs that have been picked just for me, so I can discover new artists and new music. There's also the recently played, like we just listened to the Sugar Hill Gang, so it's right there, I can navigate easily to it. And daily curated playlists. Now it's Monday. I usually like to strut into the office on a Monday and look at the playlist today. It's called the Fashion Runway Strut. That's all about me, it's right here, okay? <laughs> Now, this is not a typical Monday, but I still want to know what I'd be strutting to, so let's listen. What do we got? Louie, come do your part. Get it, girl. Yeah, that's right. She said, get it, girl. Okay? Now listen, I could be getting it, all right? I could get my strut on up and down the stage, but it's too early for that. I don't want to hurt you guys, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna pause this, okay? All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but we are, we are gonna get back to this, okay. So, the rest of For You, as you'll see, has awesome music that, again, is for my taste. I've got playlists here, albums, and there's even Connect. Now, the artists that I'm following have posted art and music and videos and all kinds of awesome stuff for me to connect to. Browse. This tab is for all of us, okay? The Apple Music editors have taken so much time, listened tons of music, to tell us what is the most recent and most important. Like you'll see right now, the hot album, Nick Jonas, all right, y'all pay attention. Now we've also got these easy navigation down here with new music, curated playlists, and even top charts. So when we tap on top charts, you can see Who's, look at that, it's Drake. I mean, Drake, Drake has been at the top of the chart for a little bit, okay? But you can see who's, who else is on there. Now, let's go to radio. 
Radio is live in almost 100 countries. You guys know that? You know radio is live? All right, and Beats One is becoming the largest radio station in the entire world. Now we can explore Beats One and see what's live and listen right now. We can also see the upcoming shows, and we can even see featured shows by legendary artists like Dr. Dre, Pharrell Williams, Mary J. Blige, Sir Elton John. Have you guys listened to a show? It's called The Rocket Hour, okay? It's, it's amazing. And if you haven't listened to it, you can tap right there and listen on demand at your leisure. So that's awesome. Now, when I want to listen to nonstop music, I can go to View All Stations and listen to genre-based stations like Pure Pop, because I like to listen to pop music all day long, why not? But I think since we're coming to the end here, I would like to do something a little bit different and play something for the world, right? So let's play some world hits. See what we've got. Now that sounds like the beginnings of some good Ghanaian high life music. All right, guys, that's the all new Apple Music. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, Bose. That's the all new Apple Music. It is incredible on your iPhone, iPad, your Mac and PC, your Apple TV, and Android 2, and that is music. Number seven, let's talk about news. Now last fall, we introduced Apple News to bring you the best stories from the best publishers, all personalized for you. And we introduced it with a great set of publications, but we've got a lot more. We now have over 2,000 publications in Apple News and our readers are loving it. In fact, we have over 60 million monthly users reading in news, and with iOS 10, we've got some big changes. It starts with an all-new design. Here's what it looks like. We've taken all of the stories in For You and broken them up into clear sections, which makes them easier to follow. Here's top stories. Here's trending, where you can see the most popular stories right now. All of the topics you follow, like sports. And news is even smart enough to create new topics for you based on what you read. Here's one for me on Formula One racing. And you're going to love our featured stories, where our editors handpick the best stories. But we wanted news to be the place where you read all of the stories from your favorite publications, and that's why we're introducing subscriptions. So now, you can read every article from magazines like National Geographic, newspaper, uh, newspapers like the Wall Street Journal, right inside of news. And in addition to subscriptions, we're bringing breaking news notifications. And so now you get the most important stories delivered right to your lock screen. That is our big update for news, an all new design, subscriptions, and breaking news notifications. And that is news. I'd like to turn it back to Craig now. Thank you, Eddie. Just some fantastic new designs. Now, on to number eight, and it's HomeKit. You know, before we announced HomeKit two years ago, the home accessory space was a mess of incompatible and insecure protocols and accessories that required you to download a separate app that you needed to learn just to control each individual accessory. But with HomeKit, we've been changing all that. We're making sure that your home automation uh, products work together easily and securely. And this year, we've rounded out the set of accessory types supported by HomeKit to include important new categories, like cameras and door locks. And in fact, essentially every major maker of home accessories has shipping or has announced support for HomeKit. And home builders are getting on board as well. Some of the biggest builders of homes here in the United States and in China are now building new homes with HomeKit built right in, so you can move in and just start controlling your home. But you know, this year, we're taking the next big step for HomeKit and iOS in the home. We're building on the HomeKit framework with a great new app we call Home. It's right on your iOS home screen. Now, when you launch the Home app, you get to see your own personalized wallpaper, 
and all of your accessories, no matter who they're made by. And you can control them so easily. If you want to turn on a light, of course, just tap it. If you want to adjust the dimmer, we'll just press in a little harder and slide, and you can adjust the dimmer just like that. So you can tap, tap, tap across all the accessories in your home, but sometimes you'd like to trigger a change to all of them, and for that we have something we call scenes. So for instance, if you want to uh, get ready for bed, you can tap good night. You'll see them close the living room shades, lock the front door, adjust the thermostat, all in one step. Now, Siri knows how to interact with scenes as well. So if in the morning you say good morning to Siri, well, Siri can automatically get your home all ready for you for the day. And you can also control your accessories without launching an app at all, because HomeKit is actually built right into Control Center. Swipe up Control Center, you can swipe over to see your home controls. And with just a tap, for instance, open up your garage door. Now, HomeKit takes advantage of our interactive notifications as well. So if someone rings the doorbell, for instance, you can tap in and actually get a live feed of your front door camera, talk to them on the intercom if you want, and even unlock the door, all right from the lock screen of your iPhone. Now, yeah. Now, since your Apple TV is always on, always plugged in, and always on the network in your home, it can serve as a secure point for remote access and automation within your home. So when you're on the go, you can actually access all of your accessories securely end-to-end -end encrypted, and you can set up automation like geofences so that when you roll into your driveway, you can make sure that the garage door will open, the lights will turn on, and maybe even the hot tub will start up in the back for you all automatically. Now, the Home app is great on the iPhone. It's also fantastic on the iPad as well. So many people like using the iPad as the ultimate home control device, whether mounted on the wall or on the coffee table. And, of course, there's nothing beating the remote that you always have with you right on your wrist, the Apple Watch. It comes with built-in home control support as well. So that's a quick update on home. Next. Yes, thank you. Number nine, phone. You know, we all receive a lot of calls, but we want to make sure that when you miss your calls, you have the best experience possible. So now, you can actually get voicemail transcription of your incoming calls, so you can see what, what it's about without having to listen. Of course, sometimes we are there and we receive a call like this, and we wonder what the heck it's about. And unfortunately, in China, this can be a real problem where there's a lot of voicemail spam. So now we're supporting an extension API where third parties like Tencent can provide information automatically to tell you a possible phone spam. This is going to be super useful for a lot of people around the world. Now, of course, people love doing calling from many, many different sorts of apps. And today, the experience is something like this when you receive a call, a notification on your lock screen. Well, now in iOS 10, we have a great new VoIP API that means your experience for incoming calls instead can be like this. <laughs> VoIP apps can now integrate into the lock screen, they're integrated into your phone recents, they're in your phone favorites, and your contact card has been enhanced so it remembers how you like to call each person and you can access them that way with just a tap. So we've been working with our partner, Cisco, on elevating mobility in the enterprise. And now, using our VoIP API combined with their Cisco Spark app, it's never been easier to use your iPhone with work. Because in addition to receiving calls uh, made to your personal cell number, you also can receive calls made to your work number right from your iPhone, whether you're at your desk or on the go. It's really handy. And that's phone. Next, okay, thanks. So next, number 10, and this one's a doozy. It's Messages. Now, Messages is the most frequently used app on iOS, and people love sharing things with Messages, whether it's photos or links to their favorite websites, but they look like this, but not any longer, because now we have rich links. So when you share links, you get artwork from the website, Extracted titles, it's really great. 
And it's especially awesome when you get shared with things like video, because they can play right in line inside the transcript. <laughs> Look at that guy go. Now, of course, we love uh, using our camera to share, and we've made the camera better than ever in messages. Now when you bring up the camera, you immediately see what's right in front of your camera. Like someone in marketing thought that's what someone sees when they bring up with their camera. <laughs> uh, and you could also slide over and see your family. It's such an incongruous set of images. Um, so, uh, so you could just tap those and insert them right into your transcript. It's really convenient. Now, people really love emoji. And now we've made them three times bigger in the transcript, which is fantastic. And to help you always reach for the right emoji, we're providing emoji predictions as you type. Super handy. But you know, sometimes you've typed a whole message and then you realize at the end that you're totally lacking in emojification. And so we've provided the solution. When you tap on the emoji button, we'll highlight all the emojifiable words there, and you can just <laughs> tap, 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 and emojify. Children of tomorrow will have no understanding of the English language. <laughs> so these are some great new features in messages. But you know, we wanted to do something more fundamental with messaging because today, no matter what you say, it's always the same bubble. It always is this, comes across the same way, but no longer because now we have bubble effects. So if you want to say it loud, you can say it loud. <laughs> And if you want to say it more gently, well, now you can do that as well. <laughs> and you know, sometimes you want to get across something personal. And invisible ink gives you the way to do that. So you can just slide your finger across the bubble and clear away the message like that. And it's a really great way to share a surprise. A little scared to see what's behind that. <laughs> you can just slide across. Okay. Now, so sometimes you just like to send a quick affirmation, a quick tap back, and now you can. Just tap, and your thumbs up can go right there in the transcript. But you know, there's nothing more personal than your own handwriting. And so now, we support handwritten messages. Think handwriting bubbles. And you see when it comes across, the care there is the ink just settles in to the transcript. It's really beautiful. And of course, we support digital touch as well. So you can send these very lively sketches, but also with video, photos, even things like your heartbeat. And sometimes what you say really deserves using the whole screen. So now messages can do that as well. You know, making all of this possible in messages has been a huge effort, cross-functional effort, across Apple. And so for our demo today, I wanted to bring up our, some leads from both our engineering team and our human interface design team to give you a demo. So let's give a warm welcome to Bethany and Emron. Come on up. Thanks, Craig. We are so thrilled to finally be able to show you what we've been working on. Now, Imran and I are going to show you the different ways that we use messages, but I'm going to kick things off by jumping first into a thread with my sister Lori, who just got to a graduation. So let's write her back and say, give her my love and tell her I said happy graduation day. Okay, now typically I would hunt for the perfect emoji to tack on the end, but now when I tap on the emoji button to switch to the emoji keyboard, words throughout my message that can be swapped for emoji are automatically highlighted. And all I have to do is tap to replace them. So I'm gonna tap to replace love, and I'm gonna choose the type of hearts I wanna send. I'm gonna do bedazzled, I think. And I can tap on happy, and I choose how happy I wanna be. What do you think? Uh, why don't you go with the upside down? Meh, no. Okay. I'm gonna, yeah. 
Hey, you be you, Bethany. You yeah. be you. I'm going to do eyes closed, kind of happy, and I tap on graduation, and it switches to the cap, which there is no chance I would have found that. None. We would have been here for days. True story. So I'm going to go ahead and send that off. So Lori just sent through a digital touch video, and what's so awesome about this is that she created this entire thing using digital touch right from within messages. And they're so much fun to make, aren't they? Yeah, and really, really fun to watch. And I'm gonna let her know how I feel about it using tap backs, which is as easy as double tapping and sending back a heart. It's that quick and that fun, and honestly, it is my favorite way to communicate now. So Lori says she can't wait to see me this summer, and I feel the same way. So I'm going to let her know. I'm going to say, me too. And I'm going to send this using a bubble effect. So I just press and hold on the send button. And I think gentle will really let her know how I'm feeling. So I'm going to choose that one. Oh, so great, Bethany. All right, so. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded a little sarcastic, I think. Well, I think Laurie felt it, that's yeah. for sure. Um, so now the both of us are going to show you just how fun things have become with a group of friends. I'm going to go in and uh, revive a chat here by sending a digital touch photo. Now, Bethany just showed us how fantastic those digital touch videos look. Let's take a look at how easy it is to make one. I'm just going to launch the camera here. You want some space up here? Yeah, just a bit. It is a process, you know? Yeah. All right. All right, I'm going to pick a color. I'm going to say, what do you think, what color? Yellow. Yellow. All right, I'm going to add my usual shout out and send. It is that easy. Looks good on the big screen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it looks like Freddie's here and as usual, loud and always ready to talk about some music. And he sent over an Apple Music link. And what's great about these is I can just play them right in line without ever having to leave my conversation. It's simply the best way to share music. Let's give it a listen. CD sound system always sounding so good, especially at Bill Graham. Um, Anne seems to agree, and she said so using a handwritten message. And these things are always so personal, always so fresh. Let's write back and say they smashed it. And I'm going to do so sending a uh, bubble effect. I'm going to choose my favorite, which is slam. Bam, always gets my point across. I think you abuse that one a little bit. I'm you know what? Say it. It never gets old, yeah. right? Oh, it's fantastic, that one. Boy, it looks like I may have smashed the demo for a moment. <laughs> All right, let's try a different one here. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, looks like we might be back up. Let's say it here. They smashed it. There you go. One more time. That works. One more time. What, what do you say? Yeah. Bam. Always looks good. Um, <laughs> I really do use it all the time, don't I? Yeah. Okay, so there we go. You know what? Our friends are always late to the game. They really yeah, are. That's true. That's okay, true. looks like they're playing in San Francisco and. Uh, as you might expect with a band like that sold out. Now, Bethany sent over an effect with uh, Invisible Ink. This is fantastic for when you want to keep something a surprise, which it looks like you may have. Um, so now, to reveal the contents, all I have to do is use my finger to swipe away the particles. Let's have a look. Oh, Bethany, you got us tickets. You know. Always coming through, always coming through. Seems like everyone else agrees. I'm going to show my appreciation by sending some big emoji here. Make sure I put myself in there. <laughs> and uh, to close things off, let's do this with a full screen effect. And we've got some lovely ones here, like lovely balloons. I'll swipe over to confetti. But I'm going to go with this one. Mm 
Nothing beats a full screen moment. That's iOS 10 messages, everyone. We cannot wait for you to try it. Thank you. Thank you, Bethany and Emron. It's just incredible work. Well, so those are some highlights for messages. But you know, we thought when it comes to expressing yourself that there was so much more we could do if we could tap into all of the creativity of all of you developers. And so we're opening up messages to developers as well with iMessage apps. With iMessage apps, iMessage has an app drawer with all of your, uh, your iMessage apps. You can tap the plus and get to the app store and find other apps. And when you download them, of course, they're here in your drawer. And there's so many different kinds of apps you can create, from things like stickers. An artist can create stickers as well without even writing any code. But for developers who do want to write code, they have access to the full iOS SDK, including access to the camera, so it can do incredible animated effects with apps like JibJab. You can accomplish more uh, sophisticated tasks as well, like payment with Square Cash, allowing you to pay someone right through the messages thread. They can receive it and redeem it on the receiving end right inside of messages. You know, there's so much you can do with iMessage apps. I'd like to show you a couple of the possibilities in a demo right now. Let's take a look. So let's dive here into a conversation. See, here's a uh, thread with the family. Now I can respond with uh, text, of course, but now with iMessage apps, I can just bring up my app drawer and I can get to all of my different iMessage apps, including some great stickers. So let me dive into these Mickey stickers. We can see that they're all animated. I can actually uh, look through them like this. I can swipe between my stickers, so maybe some from inside out. Here's some from Finding Dory. If I want to send one, I can just tap, drop it right in, just like that. It's really easy and they're really fun. Now, here I received another photo, and the great thing about stickers is you can actually peel them off and attach them to bubbles. So, you know, this one would look cool if I could just take the sun over here, maybe put that up there in the corner, and then maybe a little seal off here on the side, just like that. It's really pretty cool what you can do with these messages. Well, oh look, I got a message from Brian here. Let's take a look at this. He says, we're placing an order for lunch after the keynote, and we can see he's doing that actually with an iMessage app. So he's used DoorDash, and he's placing an order at Curry Up Now. So I can just tap in and see what's going on. Now, there's a group cart that we're all collaborating on through the iMessage app, so I'm gonna look at that. Looks like Phil has ordered the uh, Naughty Non, and uh, Jaws has uh, ordered, Brian's ordered as well. So I can put in my order, and I'm gonna go for this uh, deconstructed samosa. That looks pretty good. And I'm sure Tim would like one as well. And well, it would be rude if you know, we ate in front of you guys without getting you some. So we'll just <laughs> up this up a little bit here. And we can just add that to our, to our card, like this. And then drop it right into messages. <laughs> and Fortunate Brian will be paying for this. So a final thing I'd like to show you with iMessage apps are these uh, really fun, interactive kinds of apps. And uh, one example is JibJab. So let's jump right into JibJab here. We see there are a whole bunch of fun things. I can scroll through and see the options. I can also, of course, select from a gallery of faces. Let's pick uh, Eddie, maybe. And uh, you know, I can just drop him in to the transcript, <laughs> just like that. And I think this gives you the sense of the power of iMessage apps in iOS 10. So this is the new messages. It's, of course, fantastic on your iPhone. All of this is available to you on your iPad as well. And your Mac and your Apple Watch can receive all of this interactive content as well. So that's messages, part of 10 huge features in iOS 10. But of course, there was so much more that we can't have to talk about right now, but I can't help myself but mention just a couple more things, like notes collaboration. You now can work live with multiple people in the same note. Conversation view in mail, so you can scroll from message to message in a single thread on your iPhone and iPad. 
live photos are better than ever. They have, uh, we have digital video image stabilization, uh, so they're buttery smooth, and they're editable now as well. And finally, split view in Safari on iPads. You can put two websites side by side in Safari on your iPad. Now, iOS 10 is a fantastic release for our users. It's also a gigantic release for our developers. When you think about it, experiences like the lock screen with notifications, the phone, maps, messages, every major area of iOS now open to developers and so many other options. But you know, all of this great work in iOS 10 would be meaningless to us if it came at the expense of your privacy. And so, in every feature that we do, we carefully consider how to protect your privacy. With apps like FaceTime and Messages and HomeKit, we make sure to use end-to-end -end encryption by default and always to protect your communication. And when it comes to performing advanced deep learning and artificial intelligence analysis of your data, we're doing it on device using the incredible power of the silicon on your iPhone and your Mac keeping your personal data under your control. And when you do do searches of the internet, maybe for a route in maps or a search uh, for information in Spotlight, well, we don't build any user profiles. Now, of course, one of the important tools in making software more intelligent is to spot patterns on how multiple users are using their devices. For instance, you might wanna know what new words are trending so you could offer them up uh, more readily in the quick type keyboard. Well, differential privacy is a research topic in the area of statistics and data analytics that uses hashing, subsampling, and noise injection to enable this kind of crowdsourced learning while keeping the information of each individual user completely private. Now, Apple's been doing some super important work in this area to enable differential privacy to be deployed at scale. And we brought in the professor and researcher who literally co-wrote the book on differential privacy for a quick peek at what we were doing. And he described the work as groundbreaking. He went on to say that incorporating differential privacy broadly into Apple's technology is visionary and positions Apple as the clear privacy leader among technology companies today. We believe you should have great features and great privacy. You demand it, and we are dedicated to providing it. So that, well, actually, there's one more thing. You know, we are so excited about everything you've just seen with iOS 10. We couldn't help ourselves. We made a video. I'd love to show it to you now. Let's do it. That is iOS 10. All of you developers can get the developer preview today. And again, we're doing a public beta this July. Sign up now at beta.apple.com and we'll let you know when you can download it. And iOS 10 will be available to all of our users this fall as a free upgrade across all of these devices. That is iOS. Now I'd like to hand it back to Tim. Thank you very much. Thanks, Craig. iOS 10 is fantastic, it, and it's an enormous release. 
I couldn't be more proud and more excited about the incredible advancements across all of our platforms. Now, as we said earlier, an important part of making these platforms so capable is our developers. We believe it's crucial that we provide the best tools so you can create the best apps. That's why we created Swift. Swift is a powerful and intuitive programming language for iOS, macOS, watchOS, and tvOS. And writing Swift code is fun and interactive, and apps written in it are lightning fast. Since we released Swift less than two years ago, we've seen an amazing response from the developer community. There's already more than 100,000 apps that have adopted the use of Swift code, including great apps like Twitter and Strava and Lyft. Now, we wanted everyone to use Swift, so we released it as open source in December, and since then, the adoption has been amazing. It's already the number one language project on GitHub. Swift is powerful, but it's also simple and it's approachable, so it can be your very first programming language. This is a very important point for us. Because Swift is so easy to learn, it has the potential to bring many more people into coding. And this is an idea we would like to take even further. So today, we're introducing a new app for iPad. We call it Swift Playgrounds. Thank you. Swift Playgrounds will revolutionize the way people learn to code, and they'll be able to do it right on their iPad which instantly makes it accessible for hundreds of millions of people around the world. There's never been anything like this. We believe it's the absolute best way to teach everyone to code, combining the powerful Swift programming language and the powerful capabilities of iPad. To show it to you, I'd like to invite Cheryl Thomas up. Cheryl? Thank you, Tim. I am thrilled to show you Swift Playgrounds, an incredible new app that transforms how kids learn to code. I'll launch it right now. We land on this gorgeous screen full of custom content from Apple. Up at the top are lessons, and down below we have challenges. I'm going to start with the very first lesson in the fundamentals of Swift. We see a preview of the content with graphics and a description, and I'll open it. It starts with an introduction to the coding concept I'll be learning, and when I'm good and ready, I can just tap in the lower corner to start coding. Over on the right, you can see we have an interactive world that I can explore using touch. I'll swipe it, looks good, and pinch to zoom. This is Byte. He's my character. I think he's irresistible, and I'll be controlling him with code. Over on the left are instructions that explain and help guide me through the problem I'll be solving, and down below is where I enter my code. Byte's been waiting patiently, so I'll tap to enter Swift code. You can see commands have appeared at the bottom. These are just like quick type suggestions, but for code. My objective in this lesson is to get him to the end of that path and collect the gem. So I'll tap move forward three times and then collect gem. Watch the world on the right as I run my code. Byte moves forward, he follows the commands in the exact order I've entered, gets the gem, and I've completed my very first lesson. Kids are going to love them. Now, I can continue to the next lesson in the series, or I can jump around to wherever I'd like. To do that, I tap in the top left to open the table of contents. And you can see we include a ton of great content here to engage and motivate learners. This one on loops, looping all the sides, looks a little interesting. I'm going to check it out. 
Now, we have a few lines of code already filled in. I'll go ahead and run it and see what happens. Byte moves forward, he gets the gem, but then he just stops. Aw, oh, poor little guy. He's gonna need some help. Uh, the solution here, and I know you've all got this, is that I need to repeat that block of code four times to get byte around all four sides of the world. To do that, I'm gonna need a for loop. I'll tap the plus up top to open my code library, and all I have to do is just drag a for loop right into my code. Now, watch this. I can tap that loop, grab the end of it, and just drag it all around my code. All right, I'll tap the number placeholder, set this loop to repeat four times, looks good. Okay, keep your eyes on Byte as I run my code. He moves forward, gets the gem, makes the turn, and this time with the added for loop, he just keeps on going. I've finished another lesson, and I'm well on my way to mastering loops. Wouldn't this have been cool when we were all learning to code? I mean, come on, you students, let me hear it. Come on. Swift Playgrounds is a fantastic app to master the basics, but it doesn't stop there. Let me show you. I'll tap in the top left corner to go to my library of playgrounds. I can also explore advanced coding and use the power of the iOS SDK to do almost anything I'd like. I happen to have something I've been working on. It combines my two favorite things, physics and emoji, interestingly. Okay, you can see that this is a lot more sophisticated than what we've been doing. I have some emoji on the right, thank goodness. I can tap to add more. That's a big B, okay. Now I can also fling them around, and because this is physics emoji, they create a nice little reaction. But you also notice they're all just falling down to the bottom. And that's because right now, gravity is fixed. So I'm gonna go ahead and play around with gravity a little bit, because who doesn't like to do that? I'm gonna double tap to bring up the keyboard. We've built a completely new coding keyboard, and it is awesome. The mm-hmm. <laughs> The keyboard has the numbers and symbols we use in Swift programming, and they're right at my fingertips. I'm gonna quickly set the world's angle, world.angle, equal to the gyroscope's angle. It looks good. Okay, now look at the bottom of the keyboard. There's a V key. It also has an asterisk on it. Watch what happens when I press and drag down. I get an asterisk for multiplication. You're gonna get to see that again. I bet you knew that though, right? Look at the W key, I'm gonna press and drag down for a number two. Okay, let's see what kind of impact this had. Let's take this full screen and run my code. Of course, because my playground now has access to uh, the iPad hardware, as I pick up the iPad and I tilt it, all my emoji react. And that's how they like it, I have to tell you. Okay, so I've shown you just a taste of what you can create on your own and a small sample of the amazing lessons. That is Swift Playgrounds, a fun and powerful new way for kids to learn to code. Back to you, Tim. Thank you, Cheryl. Looks absolutely incredible. And because we're combining basic coding skills with real life code, Swift Playgrounds can profoundly impact the way kids learn to code. So we're releasing it with the developer preview today. It will be in the public beta next month. And it will be in the App Store when iOS 10 ships in the fall. Now, we believe coding should be a required language in all schools. So to help make this the case, we're gonna make Swift Playgrounds free.
And we hope that this gift to kids in schools around the world will help make coding a part of the school day. That is Swift Playgrounds. Now, powerful tools like these enable developers to create great apps, but they also help the next generation of developers who seek out on their journey to change the world. And to motivate this new generation of developers, we've created a video about what first inspired some great Apple developers to start coding, and I'd love to show it to you now. Hello, world. So this is the first computer that I coded on. In the beginning, my biggest challenge was not having access to a computer. The first line of code I wrote was bouncing ball. It would bounce around the screen, hit the edges, and then come back again. I think the first one was like a, a to-do list. It was a to-do list. I remember the first time I did it when it worked, and it was like magical. I realized that I can do anything with code. Anything I can think about, I can do it. In Beirut, we experience power outages every day. So let me see if I can just do a simple algorithm that can provide the electricity cut off time. It shouldn't cost life to give life. But if we compress all these health guidelines into small movies. I am one person that saw a problem and created a solution to stop or assist a woman in domestic violence. What we wanted, what we needed, didn't exist. So at some point, you just say, OK, well, let's do it ourselves. Let's make an app. Well, when I first start an app, I have to have a plan. We start with that little glimmer, that seed of a new, fresh idea. There's this fear of code, like it's so hard or it's inaccessible, but actually it's not. Someone who doesn't even know code at all, if they really studied some simple Swift code, they would probably be able to understand it. Anything's possible, and it all comes from that first step. Launching the app was a big moment, actually. I told everyone about it. I'm like, download my app. It's on the App Store. I was dancing. I called all my girlfriends that I cried to. It's such a crazy feeling because it's so many emotions, so many wishes, so many dreams. I always tell my students, you have Beirut electricity. My son made it. <laughs> he built it. And the girls, uh, is he single? <laughs> By the end of 2016, one million women will have a safe birth due to the Safe Delivery app. If people come together in public spaces, it creates a kind of happiness and it creates a kind of like healing effect for the soul. Don't touch my coat! Dear Kira, young people like you are tomorrow's leaders. You inspire me and give me tremendous hope for the future. Michelle and I wish you all the best. Sincerely, Barack Obama. These tools are something that we desperately need when trying to change the world. I think the more people who can learn to code, learn to build apps, the more problems can be solved. I feel like I'm creating stuff that can actually change the way people live, which is super awesome. I want to be this amazing coder, this off-the-chain senior developer where everybody comes to me and it's like, can you fix this? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, and I go in there, I'll just type up the code and blah, blah, blah. Damn, damn, damn. And like, wow, you can do this. Yay! <laughs> It's really incredible to see the inspirations of, of so many amazing developers. And I, I can't wait to see what this next generation of developers are going to create to make the world a better place. So I told you it was going to be jam-packed. What a great morning. Great updates from, to all of the platforms, starting with watchOS, faster performance, better navigation, 
all new fitness and health features to help you live a better life. TVOS, the future of TV is apps, and it now just got a whole lot better with expanded series search and single sign-on. Mac OS Sierra, bringing Siri and Apple Pay to the Mac along with some other incredibly powerful features. And a gigantic release of iOS, the mother of all releases. Incredible new features for messages, all new designs for photos, Apple News, and Apple Music. And incredible new opportunities for developers to integrate their apps with Siri, Maps, and Messages. At Apple, we believe that technology should lift humanity and should enrich people's lives in all the ways they want to experience it. Whether it's on their wrist, in their living room, on their desk, in the palm of their hand, in the car, or even automating their home. This is a huge moment for us. Four great platforms that become even more capable with working with all of you. I'd like to thank all of the developers here today and all of those watching us that have partnered with us in our quest to change the world for the better. And of course, I'd like to thank everyone at Apple, all the teams that worked so hard to make this day happen. Thank you very much and have a fantastic week. <laughs>